I was at a sex party and um Wait a second, time <laughs> out. <laughs> What's a sex party? Hey y'all, uh, it's your girl Brianna Shatice, and you are tuning in to my second episode of Talking Spit. And I have my girl Shakita here, and we're talking about something that's super, super I kind of personal to me in reality, like I feel like a lot of times women can't talk about this topic. So it's women and sex today to talking about hypersexuality. And so, Shakita, introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know who you are. Uh, social media, fun things, you name it. Um, my name is Shakita, and I am lots of things. But most of all, I'm a mom to an 11-year-old girl, Sasha. And um, I'm a makeup artist. However, I pivoted that business during the pandemic to a natural or not well yes natural but luxury vegan skincare line called Lux Glow Skin. Okay, Lux Glow Skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can find that on Instagram and Facebook. Uh I also am one sixth of a podcast called the Trail Moms Podcast. And you can go to trailmomspodcast.com and you can also find us on Facebook at Trail Moms Podcast. You can also find us on Instagram at Trail Moms Podcast and all of our uh, podcast episodes are down or downloadable on all what is it podcast platforms so spotify apple itunes all of those okay so my, my question for you is when you have free time you say you were mom okay <laughs> you did makeup which you know i could have been helped today because baby girl these lashes um didn't work with my mascara but also then you have the podcast mm -hmm. and you told me your daughter danced earlier like mm -hmm. how do you find free time to just balance life um I mean, I'm not one of those people that have to be busy all the time. Mm -hmm. So you set up a schedule where you're going to be productive. You know, like I have time where I am literally filling bottles for my skincare line, filling orders and things like that. So that way, um, when I place the order or when somebody places the order, I can just package it and send, and it, it, send out. it out. Okay. I don't have to like go okay. through all the steps. Um, my daughter is very, um, she's very much a self-starter, mm. so she gets, like, the notifications and everything for dance. Literally, the only thing I have to do is make sure that she's there. Okay. And that's it. Oh, so you got a self-sufficient baby. Yeah, that's why I'm not having no more. Y'all hear that? <laughs> One and done, she said. <laughs> and, um... And I believe in taking me time. Like, it'll get done when it get done. Okay, talk about it. She said, I'm taking some me time. So, uh, basically what she's telling y'all, ladies and gents, uh, if you have bad skin, she can help you out. I got some breakout areas, so me and her going to talk about this after the show. Just letting y'all know, look, problem areas. Um, no, give me a fun fact about yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, first one that came in your mind. I don't I want the really, second one. I want the very first one. I don't have a fun... Like, I'm real... To me, I think I'm basic, right? But I'm really not. So I don't know. I, you could. I always say I'm a, I'm a licensed securities agent. So like I'm a licensed stockbroker. Okay. And she talk about she basic. Yeah. <laughs> wait till y'all see this photo she sent me. I was like, dang, sis is stacked. Talk about she basic and her head shots look like she was ready to sell me everything she had. I'm talking about basic. Hey, you don't even know basic, but. Um, first question I really want to ask you is, what does it mean to be hypersexual? Like, you know, what's the meaning of hypersexual? Um, I mean, if you break down the terms, literally, hyper means excessive and sexual means sex. So it would be just excessive sex. However, I mean, I'm not sure, like, what that could mean exactly for yeah. somebody because, I mean, some people schedule sex, like, the whole, what, what that would be one of them twin just did that. Yeah, you talking about I saw that. No, yeah. Tamir. Was, I don't know which one it was. Tamir. It was one of them. Um, a ranch <laughs> And then some people, you know, like they have to have it daily. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, they want it a minimum amount of times a week. I feel like for me, I would put it in terms of being insatiable. Okay. Well, so, I read on that one. Um, insatiable means that basically your sexual appetite is you can't you're not you're you're never fulfilled so even though you mm -hmm. have sex you still want more, more. like okay. almost immediately okay so you're saying that those kind of like coexist amongst each other like hyper hypersexuality and that it just kind of makes it it meshes a little bit more yeah i just think like that to me that would be the definition of hypersexuality absolutely i think when i was thinking about this topic i was feeling like 
sometimes you get the bad stigma of when you want sex all the time and women are not supposed to in reality like we were designed to be pleased during sex that's what society so we were has designed said. for but systematically that has been taken away. away from us but man because i got a question down here when it comes about <laughs> men how much do men don't know about sex and pleasing a woman that's coming later but i think a lot of times when it comes to that it's like when you said hyper means a lot right and then sexual you know what sexual means I think it's really challenging for a woman. For myself, I think I struggled a lot. Like, all right, I know I'm something, but what does that look like for me trying to figure that out and navigate as a single woman in a society? So I was like, all right, maybe it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. It just depends. But how you put it, I think it was perfect. I think it's 100% perfect. And so like, the next question I want to ask you, um, if I can get this little tablet to work, is why is it so hard for women um to be comfortable with their sexuality like to display that in the public like a lot of people are getting a lot of flack about the only fans but it's a lot of women who've been already taking these pictures right now they're just getting paid for it but right. now they're getting exactly so why is it that women can't speak on sexuality and be comfortable in this world today well because we live in a patriarchal society where men feel like they want to control everything including a woman's body and her right to be sexy or whatever her perspective is you know on sex um however i feel like i have the vagina so i have the power like men gonna do what pussy say do period <laughs> <laughs> so period. when you know that it's just kind of like eh. okay sis um you know i'm i'm very traditional yeah. in this in a, in a sense so like I do believe like in traditional roles and stuff like that, but I also know like that my power as a woman, and, and it's not necessarily coming from my vagina, but it's yeah. coming from my innate yeah, like, intellect, yeah, yeah, as, whole as existence, a, right? As a woman, as a goddess, and you know my ability to influence and manipulate, like that's what women do. So um, yeah. my cousin told me she said a, a, a old player told her she said no gold mine. Shout out to Ashley Henderson for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. So, <laughs> So, you know, it's just, and, and it, we allow it, you know what I mean? Like, we allow the, the oppression and the suppression of, of our sexuality. And a lot of it has to do not just with um, patriarchy, but religion. You know, Absolutely. Like we go to church 100%. and we're told, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, you're going to go to hell. That's not natural. That's not right. And you have all this pressure, but it's conflicting because these are natural feelings that arise in you. Already. Like, Already. you're struggling. Like, it was like... How is it that, I remember, they said, kissing's going to lead to a baby. Everything's going to send you to hell. I'm like, these are natural experiences that I'm, ex what's going through, what's going on within myself. How am I supposed to suppress that? And then you find people that act out, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're like, I've been suppressing these feelings for so long. So when you do get a little taste, I'm not saying I did it. Um, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I know some people who did it. But it's just like, it's really hard because it's like, society says women are not supposed to be open about their sexuality, open about the partners that they may have. If they have a lot, if they have a little, it's just, it's looked down upon. And I think that's kind of stupid. It is. It's real stupid. Especially when men can, can we curse? Yes, you should. Oh, <laughs> you curse. Especially when men can fuck any, basically anybody anything. and anything that they want and, it, and it's fine. So, you know, it's just kind of like, Mm, you know, it's it's been too long that women have been held under the thumb of men. Absolutely. And it's time to come up from out of it, you know? Like, it's just time. So, if you was to say, what do you think is some challenges about being a hypersexual woman? Like, what do you think? I know you kind of touched on religion. You touched on what society and what men say. But what's some I challenges? I all that out the window. Religion, go. Um, men, y'all can go too. Um... I think challenge the one of the challenges for me personally is just like walking in your truth because if you are a woman who is not ashamed of being just sexual or expressing your yeah. sexuality, then you will, you know, get some yeah. negativity from both sides. Oh, it's absolutely. Lot, you know, a lot of times men are not going to commend it publicly, mm -hmm. but they will commend it privately. Absolutely. But women will shame you around like talk about that why time. is it that we get more flat from women than we do men because they're mad they that they, they can't do it too like okay they want to they want to but they can't because they a lot of we're just really raised i feel like we're bred to really care about what other people think 
And when that goes out of the window, because like I don't really care at the end of the day, like I make everything happen for myself. Absolutely. So if you're not, and I don't care what you're contributing, like it doesn't matter because you that could be replaced. All it of doesn't it doesn't matter. So everything can be replaced. It's just kind of like you know I don't really care what nobody thinks, but a lot of women do, or a lot of women just don't have that um, freedom, and a lot of women have a lot of trauma, you know, mm -hmm. around sex and. I get that because that's none, that's no individual's fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the trauma that they've experienced. However, they want to live in it. Mm. They don't want to heal from it. And so like, that's where it's like, kind of like a, it's like, come on, sis. You, that was like 15 years ago. Absolutely. And you know, you still holding it and bottling it in and that's your, like everything is a trigger. And it's just like, nobody's going to walk around on eggshells because you refuse to Man, I'm so happy that you spoke on that because initially, right, for myself, um, I uh, found out why I was hypersexual. Like me being molested at seven is why I was very, very controlling in my sexuality. And I'm like, all right. And I kind of, it kind of, you know, for instance, I read a book, right? When you introduce sex to a child, it kind of changes their perspective on what sex is. That's why you're not supposed to introduce it too early. And it's supposed to be adults are supposed to be engaged in these activities. And for myself, I was very controlling in the bedroom. I'm like, why am I like this? And the guy that I was dating, like, I'm going to need for you to give me some power. And I'm like, nah, bro, I'm initiating all the time. But it was because my first experience was something that it was taken from, you. It was taken from me. So it was like, I felt like if I'm going to engage in sex, even if I wanted to sleep with a man, if he tried to initiate it, it turned me off. I'm like, what's going on with me? And my therapist called me out and she said, Brianna, you know you're like that because of this situation. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. It's hard though. It's still, I'm working on it. I ain't got a man right now, but the next man, he going to be good. Because I'm like, baby, you initiate. You tell me what you want real quick. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. Okay. If that's what you want. Okay. I mean, I like initiating. I like being in control. I'm a Leo. Okay. Shout out to somebody okay. else. So just make sure whatever, like when, once you get your healing, you know, there's, there's scenarios, you know, of how things could and should play out. But just make sure that that's what you want. Absolutely. I think now... I feel like I kind of remember. So I know you've seen the movie. Uh, was it what a man, what man thinks or something with Taraji? No. All right, so Taraji was very, very controlling in the bedroom. I feel like Taraji. She was like, now I gotta watch it. You have to watch it. If y'all have not seen that movie, like what men think or so what men want or whatever. Yeah, that's how I was functioning as a woman in the bedroom. I'm like, nope, I'm gonna do everything. Now I'm like, you know what? You're going to have to do something, too, because uh, like, these knees is not built like Megan Thee Stallion. Pop, lock, and drop it. Jump mess me up. Mm -hmm. Um, So, <laughs> okay. Look. I'm going the least possible. She said, as least possible. Y'all hear that? <laughs> she said she is laying there if she can. I don't just lay there, but, you know, like, I, like I said, I'm traditional. So, I like, I mean, I initiate, but I like when a man initiates. Okay. And I don't necessarily have to, I think there should be balance. Okay. You know what I mean? Like a give and take. Yeah. A and partnership some, some in people are going to be more um, dominating and Absolutely. some people are going to be more submissive. And there's going to be instances where, you know, where there, the balance is, you know, just more so on one side than the other. And it's fine. But I think that communication is a big part. Absolutely. Of like part. understanding. One thing that I appreciated about a guy that I dated is that he wanted to study my body. And that's when we get to this men question. I would mention that like that was probably the most sexy thing I've ever seen in a man that he really wanted to make sure that I was good at all times. And I was like, let me make sure he's good too. Because it was like, it's attractive when a man like, you know, I want to take care of your needs and make sure everything that you got going on is, is phenomenal. So that was huge. So what would you say, does being a hypersexual woman make you a hoe? No, absolutely not. Because you can be hypersexual with the same person. Talk about it, okay? I mean, so what happens when you don't have a person? So this is the next question. So what happens when you're single and you don't got a person? Can you get you somebody or get a toy or double click the mouse? I mean, do what you gotta do. She like said double click the mouse. <laughs> that means watch porn, y'all. I don't know if y'all no, caught that. That means double click the mouse with your finger. That means masturbate. Oh, Rub your clip. Double click the mouse. That's a new one. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> double click the mouse. I thought you gotta. Struggle, struggle like a guitar. Mm, mm, mm. That, I don't like that. I don't like that. I like this. Okay, but, this. Yeah, yeah. We coming from a woman that don't masturbate. What? Okay, let me tell you why. <laughs> segway, y'all. Segway. I love human interaction, right? So it's like, now, granted, I can make myself come, right? Okay. 
because my mind is so powerful and it's like aligned with my vagina but it's like i don't have fun touching myself i prefer having someone in the room with me and i, I tried like i was trying to experience i was like masturbate is gonna be the best thing i'm like i can't do this like no one's here and i don't know why i'm like this but it's really really funny that I can literally envision me doing something and I can come as if I'm doing it versus me touching myself. That's the same thing as masturbation. You just So I'm like, I'm, I'm, mentally, I'm mentally fucking myself. Basically, or somebody else is fucking you, but you could choose whoever the fuck you want. Like when you're that masturbating. Boom. But it's just like, how do you, how do you like... Get, right, you listen, you, you need a bullet. A, oh, a bullet. Didn't somebody just say this? She actually said that. This is the bullet of, 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 of microphones. You need to get you a bullet, a bullet vibrator. It's this big. And it's just for the, because the shower, I got to extend the shower head. No, you need the bullet, girl. 30 seconds, you'll be done. Abdomen, be cramping and everything. You'll be fine. Okay, so I got to give me a bullet. I got to, uh, so I got to retire my shower head. No, so. don't retire your shower head. Now, see, for me, I can't, I've never been able to uh, use a shower head. You now, my friend in high school. You want to take it off. Yeah, I got that. It don't work for me. Oh, um, my friend in high school told me about the shower head, and I've never been able to. But a bullet, I, I'll go through at least two of them a year. I had a Hitachi. I broke the hair broke off and everything. A Hitachi. Yeah. I thought you said Hibachi. I about to say, damn, you know, I ain't no baby hunters. Made bullets. I'm about to say, baby hunters is doing some extra stuff. Yeah. She said, I got a Hibachi. <laughs> <Just play. laughs> so, a question. <laughs> That is funny to me. I took it myself. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Shout out to Ashley again because my jokes just be coming. Okay? It just be coming. Um, how much do a man not know about pleasing women? It depends on the man. I have been very lucky in my sexual. <laughs> okay. Put in, me my, on. in my sexual relationships, um... Yeah, girl. I don't even, and I think. So, that, have you ever been in a situation that you weren't being pleased? Oh, yes. What did that look like, and how did you express it to him? Like, all right, there was nothing. This is that not, can, there's nothing. That you, I'm not a teacher. Oh, he was a shrimp. You don't, yeah, if you don't come prepared, like if you don't have what it takes to do the job, like if you don't you fit know, the job description, period, then you just can't do it. Okay. So, at that point in my life, I was trying to build a more emotional bond, not necessarily a physical one. I don't know why I was trying to do that, but. That's what I was working on. We trying to fall in love so it could feel I like was it was to, better. I was trying to, That's I guess, suppress my hypersexuality, right? I guess. Because whatever I was doing, I felt like it wasn't working because I wasn't, like, able to So wasn't that, man. like, he, like, for instance, all right? I know a lot of times, like, if he's not big or, I'm like, if he's not big, his, his tongue better work. Uh, so it was just worked. like nothing. No, nothing oh, worked. Wow. He wanted to marry me. He wanted to marry That's unfortunate for him because his life... It's just like, <laughs> you didn't teach him nothing, how to suck a titty There's, directly. No, I don't have time. I don't have the patience. Um, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Dang. Because like me, I was in love with someone that didn't satisfy me. And that's made me realize. So have you ever heard of tantric sex? Mm -hmm. So tits, boom. I literally had to physically, that's when I realized that I can make myself when you love somebody, you sacrifice. But when I look back at it, I, I was didn't stupid. Really like him that you much. see that? It was a door stopper. If it was a door stopper. <laughs> that's what he was. It was like when he was in there. I was like, is it his pinky? His finger? It, that, period. Like what? There's how nothing. does that happen? Did their ancestors curse somebody and like it is moved forward? Because that's unfortunate. He was. He was African. He was African. He wasn't African. He he oh, was he one was of the Africans African. that uh, family got circumcised yeah. and just cut off extra skin <laughs> and then it moved forward. And to, he told me he didn't have a big dick. Like before we you. had sex, he was like, "I don't have a big dick. I hope you think. I hope you don't think that I have a big dick because I don't." And da da da. And I was just like, "Well, damn!" Like in my mind, I'm like, "It can't be that bad, girl. It was bad." So he basically peed on his balls. When oh, that's unfortunate, fellas. <laughs> All right, so look, shout out, fellas, that if you are not, you know, physically equipped. You better learn how to like eat the box, and so in reality, don't just stay at the clip. You got even get, that, like it wasn't. So that doesn't do anything for you. It does. I need both. Like I'm not a one or the other. Like I need you to have the equipment and know the routine. Like I, I need. Listen. You need the package. So you need basically, yeah. you know, when you go to the, the car wash and it says you want, you know, the works. You know, you it's need like the a works. scratch that you need, an itch that you need scratch. Okay. And okay. if you don't have like a back scratcher, like if it's like way in the middle of your back and you can't reach it for whatever reason, then it's still going to itch. So if he can't scratch my itch, what, what, 
what are we doing? Mm, that's unfortunate. All right, so I know we mentioned this earlier off uh, off camera and off um, the microphone. What do you think about when uh, Tia talked about scheduling sets? I thought, now granted, I think about both their lifestyles, right? They're both busy, but I don't want it to be like, all right, it's Wednesday, babe. I don't never want that to be my life. I'd rather pop up on on a movie set or pop up at his job. You gotta get it in consistently. That's just for me, right? I'm 29, so I'm thinking like as I get a little older, maybe my sex drive will go down. But when I'm in love with somebody, I want it as much as I possibly can get it. And so, like, what does that look like? Like, could you schedule sex I like mean, a, like he was writing in your planner? I, I know because I don't have a planner. First of all, second <laughs> of all, um, I feel like. If you've had, like, say, like, if you had, like, a busy week and y'all both been tired for whatever reason, I feel like you have to make it a priority. Mm -hmm. Like, tonight, you're going to give me some dick, right? Okay, look. But. Drop them drugs. What right. You said you dropped that pen and dropped that dick. <laughs> but not, like, next Wednesday at 2.15, I'm going to squeeze you in between lunch and my 5 o'clock meeting. And that we have can never be me. 30 minutes to, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just. Uh, 30 minutes? Speaking of, okay, I'm happy that you said 30 minutes. What is the maximum amount of time you need in the bedroom? Because I know back when I was a kid, right, my first, he'd be like, we be fucking all day. I'm like, now I'm 29, I got a job, I got priorities. I can't be doing this all day. So if what is the- a good time, you're having a good time. Like, there is no time limit on having a good time. Like, right. when you go out, you out, right? You yeah. just set your alarm so that you don't be late but for work the next time. But you don't get tired, see, ooh, you, you, you going to be tired. You do it. <laughs> Oh, you freaking. You're going to be tired, but it's worth it. Because, like, think yeah, about how. I can't function after. My legs look like time. Bambi. That's fine. Take your BC, get you some Excedrin, aspirin, get you some Gatorade. You'll be fine. Sleep okay. and get off work. Like, okay, look. If you're having a good time, just have a good time because you're right. it's not going to be like that every single time. You have to, I mean, it's a delicate flower, right? So you can't be doing that all the time. So you got to let them know. Like, up like a balloon. Period. So you got to let know. This is. <laughs> Cool, but you know, I need ice pack, I gotta chill, I got you know, and but every so often I feel like it's okay. Okay, to, okay. You know, See I think hours. What happened with me is the guys that I was in a relationship were pretty large. Mm -hmm. So it's like I can't we can't be doing this all day. Cause I mean she she don't turn off sometimes if I'm you know, if I'm intoxicated, she won't turn off. Mm -hmm. But if I'm sober, she'll turn off when I tell her. I'm gonna need you to wrap it up. Like we're gonna have to figure this out. I can't be going off. Forty five minutes, I think this is how it works. Fifteen minutes of foreplay, you touched it on each other, you know, you had another five to seven ahead, and then the rest forty five minutes. Head is a part of foreplay. Nah, I'm talking about rub, you know, sensual stuff, oh, touching, yeah, massages. Okay. You know, head is a part of the sex part. As soon as you insert anything <laughs> into any object, <laughs> you put your finger on something, that's part of like sex. And so I think forty five minutes is good for me. And if you guys are doing more than 45 minutes, y'all going to have to find Shakita because that's the thing that she's having a good time. No, I'm in a relationship. So, she, so she's in a relationship, y'all. Take that back. Sorry, babe. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. She is not available. Basically, period. But um, 45, I mean, I just, I don't have a real time limit. Okay. Um, I just kind of like to let it flow naturally now. Okay. If it does carry over longer than I would personally like, you know, there are some tips. There are some few things that you could do to speed okay. up the process. Not that, but not necessarily. You know, call them daddy. Start screaming, moaning, yelling. Whatever you got to do. I'm like, baby, you want to fix it. Not even te don't tell him because you don't want your man to feel rushed. Well, you just say, get off of me. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I am right on somebody. Him. I was like, hold on. I'm so happy that you are trying to win an Academy Award, but baby, I got work in the morning. So come here, let me just help you finish. Because evidently, you don't want to finish. No, I have not had guys that don't want to finish. Like you want to finish today. Good. Like they don't want to stop. It'd be real good. Listen, to them. you gonna have to stop. Forty-five minutes. I'm wrapping it up. I'm gonna set a timer. What's uh, LMA say? Shot clock. Oh God. I can't. What? Talk about. Talk about. We having a good time. So evidently, I was going to ask you to hook me up with your boyfriend, friend, or brother, but evidently, they're in a different yeah. type of caliber in my life, and I don't need them type of spirits, because the longer you go, I feel like I'm being digmatized. Shout out to Ashley on you that one, too. You necessarily won't be. I mean, uh -huh. I don't been. Have you ever of been like to the point that you like, oh, he, can, he can't do nothing wrong? Yes, girl. 
I think we all have. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I was one, one time. Or two. Uh, some of us be, that be every nigga for some of us. <laughs> but, you know. Because <laughs> there's some dudes out here that is walking around with door stoppers like your African. He's not African, by the way. They definitely chopped him off. But I remember, I think the craziest, I was going to ask you this question. And I'll answer it after you ask. What is like the craziest like thing you ever done to like for a guy that you was like indigmatized by? Like what's the craziest thing you ever did? I'm not going to admit to that. I, so, you know, I'll make her comfortable. I'm going to tell her the craziest thing I did. So I had this guy I was just infatuated with. Ooh, he told me he was going out of town. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, bam, going out of town. I'm like, he ain't really going out of town. So I think like there was an emergency and I was his wife and I called the airline to see if he was on the flight. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, no, don't tell him. I, 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 is he on the flight? Is the flight everything okay? And I just had this whole little story. And then I'm like, all right, I checked. I tracked the flight until it land. And then I was like, he don't call me in these five minutes that he cheating. I don't know why. But it was just that good. It had me like, acting a little crazy. I was like, I literally called the airline, acting like Were I was in a relationship. Yep, and it's just oh, everything. Okay. I was just infatuated with this man. He could do no wrong to me, like nothing. And so now that I told my crazy story, I'm not crazy like that no more. I'm not gonna check the fight inventory. You know, I oh, might just baby, I drop have, you off at um, the airport. But I think the craziest thing I've like. um Well, you scared to say it. Go ahead and say it. I need to hear this. I know it's only crazy, crazy things, to move. But the craziest thing I did was, um, hold on to some crack. Ooh. She was <laughs> like, smuggling, y'all. She put it right between yeah. the bubbles. You see them teasing sitting there, right? I was right. the trap queen for a little bit. You was the trap queen <laughs> for a little bit. Dang, never mind. I didn't help. I didn't help. Everybody. Okay, ladies, why do we mess with drug dealers? Like, it be. Because, girl, he had. Girl. He was hung. It was like this. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, my drug dealer had an elephant trunk, so I get it. Yeah, it why is that? Why is it the drug dealers that's built like that? And then the dude that's working on Wall Street is hung like a shrimp cocktail. Um maybe I girl, I don't know. I ain't even trying to make sense of it. I don't know. Cause I'm I don't want another drug dealer. My my mom, my that guy best friend just said uh say yes if you ever date a drug dealer. It was like 30 comments of girls. I was like, who has who that? Is? Who has not had a drug dealer? Come on, black men. And I know it's white men drug dealers too, but come on, black men. Why y'all selling drugs? Because they have to. And they're all selling drugs and giving no. great pipe. That's no, like not even a good combination. In the system, they can't get a job. They can't get a good penis. Why do they got they great penis, penis and that? Because they do. That's what they're physically, naturally endowed with. It's that's good. that's why. Smack it, smack it. That's, that's, that's why white men want to keep them oppressed. You're right. Like it's a whole situation. So basically, what you're saying, like what they did to Kunta, was because Kunta was had the potential to be a drug dealer because he had a slum. Well, no, not a drug dealer, but Kunta look, he, he looked like he was a drug dealer. And the way that he was acting, he was rebelling. He could have sold some drugs. He was selling cotton on the low. That's why they beat him the way they did. But um, so I'm gonna have you um, pick a number, and I got some questions, right? Okay. And so I, depending on your number, now these are a little spicy, so you can need to pack. She ain't now. Never mind. We've already figured this out. <laughs> According to her picture, I can't wait till y'all see this picture, y'all. She was straddled on the chair and them thighs was looking delicious. I was like, girl. All right, so question between one and ten. Uh, six. Six. All right. So do you prefer shaved or unshaved? For me or him? Either or. Shaved. Shaved. Why? I don't like hair in my throat. <laughs> wait, I didn't laugh because of you. Because we was talking about this. Woo, <laughs> y'all. Me and my family crazy. Like a hairball. We like, were talking. We were talking about this, and this question kind of popped up, and it was like, "Cause what you mean, like, uh, hairy balls?" And I was like, "You just got yeah. just throw it a little bit, just uh, just Ooh. throw it just a little bit, just a mm. tad bit. That's it." No, I get waxed monthly. Okay, look. Yeah. What? No, no, no. Me, I'm talking about. I'm good down here. But I said, "Hey, I don't mind look." Oh, so, he need to wax too or shave. He, Wax or shave. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 cool. All right, pick another one. Out of seven. Out of seven? Yep. Three. Three. All right. Catch his kids or no? Uh, Meaning like, you know what I mean by yeah, kids. Yeah, I know. Oh, so you be throwing the watermelon? I mean, it depends on the relationship that you have with him. So you're in a relationship. And his diet. <clears throat> Talk about it. Can we segue? <laughs> diet. How does diet play into, uh, into a factor, into what a man tastes like? Oh, and what is that consistent? Because if it's at, if it's a, if it, if it, if he if he drinks a lot, if he eats a lot of meat, if he don't eat no vegetables, I mean it's the same shit with us. Like they don't want to taste us if we taste not, like battery like, fluid. Exactly down there. So I mean, it depends on one or two things for me. It depends on how I'm feeling in the moment. Like 
he fucked me so good. I'm like, I'm gonna. I'm so gonna you catch it in your mouth or you put it on? Because put it on here. Oh no, catch his kids means like catch it in my mouth. But um, it also would. So there's one. So that either he fucked me real good or we are in a relationship and we have like this level of confidence, things like that. Now that also is some shit I will say to a man to make him hurry up and come. So, so what you be saying? I might be like, oh, you know, I want to, I want to taste your kids. I want to swallow your kids or some shit like that. Ooh. That don't mean I'm gonna do it. But I'm he's just, like, I want you to come. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. <laughs> so I had, I'm not gonna lie, I only mess with guys that are borderline vegan. And the reason why is because no. of what you just said. I had dated a guy who was vegan. It just changed my whole perspective. Like my pH was great. Not saying he was doing it um, all the time, bro. Because I don't recommend that safe sex. Birth control, no plan B, birth control, ladies. But I was like, wow, this is crazy that how his body, because what he eats makes my body feel better, made me want to change my diet. So diet is, men, please stop eating that pork, stop eating that red meat, stop drinking, smoking, because that does affect you. And if you are doing it wrong, it affects us too. Yeah, and then they'll try to say that, like, oh, she was whack, she was out of balance. And it's just like, no, you made her you out, out of balance. Thank you. You yeah. messed up her pH. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. All right. Um, two more questions. Uh, is head mandatory? Yes. Both yes. ways. Always. Yes. So when was it when you first started giving head? I received head before I even had sex. Same. <laughs> so for me, I mean, if I was little, you going to if you head. don't give head, there's literally nothing, nothing for us to talk about. about. <laughs> At all. I did have one who who didn't give head, and I was like, "Okay, you don't now, you will," and he did. Okay, look. So, so when did you start giving head? <clears throat> a long time ago. <laughs> so she, that's basically so she just admitted, y'all. I'm just gonna say it. So she was one of the girls. Like, you know what? Like, you know, nobody knew. Like, cause I I always dated older oh, men. Okay. So like, people always assumed that like I had a boyfriend or like you know I dated which I did like I so like I was in high school when I graduated high school I think my boyfriend was like 25 oh wow yeah. so you was like you was dating experienced men already yeah but he, like they I was I was much I, I went through a lot okay. in my childhood so I was a little bit more mature and um I was also like I had always been more physically developed than girls my age um, but anyway, I met him when I was like, well, at the time when I graduated high school, I met him when I was 17 and you know, he was sweet. He was nice to me. He was drug dealer. He bought me stuff. <laughs> Shout out to the drug dealers. <laughs> he was, he treated me the way that I wanted to be treated at that time. And to me, that was like the most important thing. I had boys who went to my high school who wanted to date me, but like, I couldn't take them seriously because, because. they... They just they first of all one of, well it was actually one dude who did want to date me but he didn't eat pussy so I was like we can't go together because I'm not gonna lie in high school it was like a select few of guys that was into just doing I'm not gonna lie. I didn't start giving head until I was 25 and so I'm 29 now so that mm -hmm. was like I was like I'm saving myself for marriage why when I was throwing that he thing probably, in a circle he got a good armpit ear globe that's about the only hole he gonna get that ain't been I have I tried to eat. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just, mama, I'm just playing. My ears ain't big enough. I thought about it because I seen a scary movie. You know, I digress. All right. So, uh, last question. Um, craziest sex story? Ooh. Um, crazy? Like, what do you mean? So, for instance, you say craziest sex story, I'm going to give you my story. So, I started having sex in high school. Uh -huh. um, and I had an experience when a parent got home. And so I had to hop out a window. Oh, that's your craziest sex experience? Girl, that's normal. <laughs> that's normal. I, do that. I need to live on the wild side, Brianna. Start oh, over. Oh, God. Start over. That, that's it. Um, my crazy sex story is I was at a sex party. And. Um, Wait a second. Time so out. <laughs> What's a sex party? Before you say the story, what is a, is it it's like, a party where everybody's there to have sex? So is it like the their, Pandora's box? I know what movie you talk, know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. I don't know if I remember if I ever really seen it, but it's a party where people come and have sex, and they can either have sex um, exclusively with the person they're with, or they can have sex with other people. That's real, like yeah, sex parties. Y'all, I'm not living life. <laughs> So, okay, so could come so on. Crazy crazy I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> so, the 
private sex party. Okay. And um, the guy that I was there with. Okay, so here there are some rules, right, about sex parties. Yeah. Typically, um, women can come by themselves, but if a man comes, he has to bring a woman. Okay. He can't get in. Or he, if it's a party that charges um, for you to get in, the man typically has to pay like around double of what it costs to get in if he comes without a woman. Oh wow! So and it's not cheap. People, how many people do it be? Oh, bro, this is this is intriguing. And it's so they got skirts Girl, like yeah. this. Yes. So okay, um, come on. We gonna talk about this off camera. I'm not saying that I'm interested, in Mama. I'm just saying I just wanted to hear more about it. I don't want her to feel com uncomfortable on camera. Oh, so um, I'm living my truth, right? I'm grown. I'm 36. I'm come good. on, sis. So, talk about it. Um, what? Oh, so the crazy thing was, we I was there, and the person I was there with, he saw somebody that he, was a friend of somebody that he was seeing. So he, like, got super nervous and was like, I'm ready to go. And I was just like, what? <laughs> That's your business. Right. Like, we here. Like, what, what do you we mean? We about to get it cracking. I is, paid my fee. It's, well, it wasn't that type of part. Like, I didn't have to pay to get it. It was, it was very private at somebody's home. But when you're at... When you're doing things like that, like the level of discretion is high. I'm a very discreet person, even though I'm like open with my experiences yes. as far as like who, where, when, what, like I'm typically very discreet. So the level of discretion is high when you're doing these parties. So you don't necessarily, because nobody there wants to be exposed. Nobody oh, wants no to be one. like, oh, I'm like, hey, oh I my God, this sex party. Right, exactly. It was crazy. This is this big, this big, this big. You know what? So I was like, you're fine. Like, you know, and but he was so freaked out, bro. We ended up leaving. I was so mad. I was like, you a, like, Dang. girl, I don't want to end on him. I think I stopped fucking with him after that. I was like, you a punk ass bitch. Like, so you're you telling me that, <laughs> so have you only been to one sex party? Oh, no. So, been to several. How do you, maybe, I'm asking, how do you come about being, finding out? Is this like on the black market of like sex.com? Like, what is that? Um, oh, wow. How Right. Tell me how I got into. I mean, I. That's crazy because you know when I was, <clears throat> so I seen Pandora's box at a very young age. Told you, you know that whole mm -hmm. idea of sex. Mm -hmm. I used to watch a lot of porn as a kid. Mm -hmm. My mom had this BB. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> um. Oh, I gotta edit that out. I can't throw Mama. Sorry, she she married. She Christian. She had a white thing. We're not gonna talk about it. Mm -hmm. But look. So I watched it and I was like, wow, that would be interesting. Like to see this whole dynamic. Uh, what was Public it? Party? Yeah, like just to see what that, like what is the environment like? The, the I mean, you smell, know, there's clubs but, that you can go to, like sex clubs, right? Oh, wow. I'm not, I have not experienced life. <laughs> How am I single and I'm not experienced life? And then I don't want to do it with my man because I'm selfish. I can't. Oh, but, you want to know. Okay, yeah, no. Yeah, you I want to do that before you get a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm be like, uh uh, sis, if you don't back up our not, punch you in your face. Talk, what, what you looking at this thing for? It's mine. We came here so we could y'all can watch us. And that's cool, too. Some people, you could do that. Because I like being watched. Yeah, you could do that. That's a lot. That's a part of a sex party. Like, it's like voyeurism. Okay. So, like, some people go and they watch. Some people go and they get watched. Some people oh, wow. dress up. Some people will like to um, get. <clears throat> me like dominatrix style yeah bdsm um, you said BD, 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 BD. that's what it is like um oh we need her go, she gonna be my new best friend <laughs> she gonna help me figure out my whole chakra thing that lines with shamanism and sadomasochism that's what sadomasochism sadomasochism but oh wow yeah. um, that is interesting wow okay so I guess I'm yeah I'm not as hypersexual as I thought I was. That's, I, that's completely separate. It has nothing to do really? with your sex drive. It's more about oh, like your, your interest in sex or what what turns you on. Like that do you turn like me kink? On. Do you? Oh yeah, I like kinky. Yeah, yeah. See? but how kinky though? Because like some people um, at the parties, like they they're on a leash and they're walking around on all fours. Being that's not kinky. That is controlling. I'm not a dog. Some people like to be submissive. It turns them on. So like. Mm. <laughs> I don't really know how I would feel if a man was like, yeah, babe, put this leash around my neck. What? Leash? I mean, that's a conversation you would have. Okay, so guys, I'm as you can see, Brianna, me, Shatice is not into all the leashes, mm -hmm. but you can spank me, maybe. But, have you ever been told? Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't know if I wanted like to die or live, because it was just like, I didn't know. Yeah. It's kind of like a leash. Like, leashes kind of choke you a little bit. You're not about to choke me with no mm -hmm. leash. Talk about safe word. I seen something like that. Give me a safe word. If you choking me, nigga, how I'm gonna say the safe word? How you gonna hear it? This is absolutely ridiculous. 
But no, this was a pleasure. You have informed me of things that I was not aware of. I knew, I knew them people wasn't that creative. They was just going off of somebody's real life. I'm thinking these people just, just nasty. They thinking about sex parties, dick slanging, titties. I was like, but that's actually even, exists. I don't even read Zane. Like a lot of people like Zane. Like it's kind of boring to me. Oh wow. Yeah. Dang. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I gotta get my life. You know what? But you know what? Right now I'm in my, my vagina on sabbatical, so I'm not really. You could, you could, you can go as a woman. You have. Can leverage. I go and watch? Yes, as a oh, woman, so you I have can go and watch. You can go and watch. Men cannot just go and watch. Dang. They have to be we participating or with. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that mm -hmm. off camera because uh, mm -hmm. you know my mama is a saint. <laughs> um, but no, thank you, so Queen. Listen, this conversation <laughs> here, baby, had me reevaluate my whole little situation, even though she on sabbatical and she is too. But no, this was <laughs> this was a pleasure. Um, wow, uh, yo, this episode was phenomenal. I, I love that you came, you educated Aww. me on some stuff, and we got to just chat. This was phenomenal. Um, you guys, you can always find you. Can you tell me where you can find you again? Self again on your social um, media? Social media is at well, Instagram is at Catwalk Fears. Um, Facebook, eh, no, that's private. Yeah, Instagram at Catwalk Fears. Catwalk Fears. <laughs> Listen, Shakita was phenomenal, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode two of Talking Spit. And always remember peace, love, happiness, and success. Y'all, I'll talk to y'all later. I'm going to talk to her later, too. <laughs> because evidently, Brianna needed to get her life to get her chakras off. And she hasn't been to a party What she says in Minnesota. Is it a bunch of white people? You know what? See y'all later. Yes. So see y'all later. Bye. <laughs>